And I would like to introduce uh, Juan Bisquer now for the lecture. So um, Juan Bisquer, many of you of course know him. Uh, he's a professor of applied physics at the University Jaume de Castello and also the director of the Institute of Advanced Materials there. And he's a very distinguished researcher in the field. So he's done um, many, many, he worked on many, many different uh, topics um, all around the materials uh, and devices for energy conversion. And this includes photovoltaics, of course, uh, but also other uh, energy conversion and storage devices. Um, he worked on nanostructured metal oxides, semiconductor quantum dots, uh, organic, um, inorganic systems, uh, and also um, uh, more recently, of course, the metal halide perovskites. Now, Juan Busquets group worked on all kinds of the materials, but also, um, uh, uh, or in particular, they are uh, most well known at the moment, at least for uh, impedance spectroscopy on these perovskite solar cells. And this has uh, taught us a lot about how these devices work, um, where and how recombination happens, for example, and also uh, in particular how degradation works. So for example, how at an interface uh, certain reactions happen and how they, perfect, uh, how they affect the performance um, and the working mechanism of these solar cells. And very recently, actually, uh, um, uh, Juan Bisquer has also looked into um, how these perovskites could be used in other applications that go beyond solar cells. So in this, uh, in this case, they looked into how they could be used, for example, in memristor devices. And this is a direction that I personally find uh, very fascinating. Juan is a very um, distinguished researcher. He published over 400 uh, papers and research journals, um, authored a whole series of books uh, actually also, uh, uh, as far as I'm aware, a nonfiction book. Um, and he uh, summarized all the different uh, findings in the nonfiction books, at least in these, uh, the volume, The Physics of Solar Cells that was recently published uh, last year in CRC Press. And I think also uh, this lecture will be based on some of the topics in his book. Homsky is also the president of the Foundatio Skito, which is hosting the Nanogy conferences amongst uh, a few other things. Uh, and I'm very grateful that they're pushing the online conferences so much um, that uh, we can also still keep in contact even though we have a pandemic going on. And I hope that actually online conferences also remain after the pandemic. Now the lecture that we will hear in a minute is an introduction or a satellite uh, or an introduction to solar cells and in that respect a satellite event for the photovoltaic school happening next week that also Monica already introduced. So at the school, we will hear um, in, in even more detail about the inner workings of solar cells, um, starting from the very basics, how uh, solar cells operate, uh, going to what makes them a good solar cell, um, how recombination works, how charge extraction works, how you can model solar cells. So a lot of different topics are covered. And it's a, a special um, online conference in the sense that no research talks will be given. It's really only about lectures of the fundamentals of solar cells. So this is a a chance to make up for the fact that we're missing all these summer and winter schools these days. The school will happen next week and you can still register and I think the registration closes at the 5th of February and the um, poster submission on the 7th of February. So please do uh, register if you want to learn even more about solar cells. So with that I'm very happy uh, to introduce uh, Juan Vizquea and I really look forward to your uh, lecture on the physics of solar cells. Juan. Yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Bruno, for the nice uh, presentation. So uh, here we are as the preliminary lecture on, on photovoltaics and solar energy conversion. And today uh, I want to explain uh, a very basic aspect uh, of the concepts that lie behind uh, solar energy conversion with solar cells and other devices. And I will start with a presentation for an introduction. So uh, this is the title of the talk, is the physics of solar energy conversion which is uh, the title of the book that uh, it has already been commented by the presenters that is quite new. It was published a few months ago based on a collection of previous books. 
and uh, I will be basing my talks on this book. So I want to, to uh, set the stage and justify which is the idea. So what we want uh, to find in, in this lesson is the principles of energy conversion with advanced materials that contribute to a sustainable future, uh, creating um, green energy and also storing this energy and also uh, saving energy, for example, in efficient lightning. This is the, the priorities we have now in this area of science. So it, it's uh, a lot about discovery, the systems, uh, is a lot about uh, energy materials and how they work when they are combined. How do the functions and the functions can be photovoltaics, uh, which is conversion of uh, solar light to electricity. Solar fire production is creating some uh, chemical that stores the energy in a permanent form. Uh, there are other ways of uh, energy storage, such as batteries. And then uh, there is creating light uh, for lighting, basically. So uh, photovoltaics has been based uh, for many years, since the years uh, 1950 or 60, in the technology of uh, silicon solar cells. It's a, it's a thick material, several hundred micrometers that uh, uh, takes electrons and holes and bring it to well structured contacts. And the, the physics of solar energy conversion was very much based around this uh, highly crystalline semiconductor. So uh, in 1990, more or less, started the uh, extensive investigation and, and discovery of other alternatives like the dicetized solar cell in which you have uh, an organic element which is excited and injects electron into a nanostructure. There was also developed the uh, all polymer, all organic solar cells like the bulk junction, where you have a mixture of two materials and uh, also the quantum dot solar cell as a sensitizer. Uh, using quantum dots as sensitizer, and this started booming. The community was very small in 1990. In uh, starting 2000, it began to grow and became a major topic of research. And as a spin-off of the quantum dots sensitized solar cells, around 2010 appeared the uh, perovskite uh, solar cell that now uh, has become uh, the dominant, uh, without doubt, of the field because it is a special semiconductor and the efficiencies are going in 10 years up to 24 in different configuration using or not nanostructures to collect charges. It can be totally thin film. Uh, but anyway, it's this has gone up much uh, faster than pre practically any previous technology, which required about 30 uh, years of development. And now we have a lot of perfection in the development of the perovskite solar cell. But it's not only about the perovskite. Uh, the point we, we try today and in this book, and it, it was the research about my, my career, was to, to find a common ground for describing the photovoltaic operation in these very different types of systems, which can be highly ordered or disordered. So what do you have in common? What are different details? Uh, this is the point to establish general principles, a general mechanism of generating electricity from light. And this was uh, written by me over many years, uh, uh, starting starting 2009 to work 2008. Uh, then I, I made three books about uh, uh, these topics uh, with basics, transport, and the physics of solar cells. And uh, while I was writing the books was when the perovskite was developed. So that I had to move from the very disordered system to the very ordered system and make an effort to integrate everything. 
So uh, after all this collection was completed, the editorial suggested putting all together in a single volume. It was updated for last year. And this is the book I'm talking about, The Physics of Solar Energy Conversion. So it's giving a view of the principles of solar energy conversion. And it takes a broad perspective and goes into the details of many, of many specific uh, systems. It highlights the discovery of the perovskite solar cell, which was done at the time of writing the book. And I was uh, meeting all the, all the protagonists uh, of this discovery and participating in the understanding of the perovskite with many other scientists. And then including also the topics I mentioned before, like organic solar cell, like emitting the iodes, and also the uh, hydrogen production from uh, water speaking. So today I want to give an overview of the main concepts that form this uh, basic understanding of the physics of solar energy conversion. Uh, and there are four topics, a very basic uh, uh, chapter on the properties of electrons and holes in materials, then the light interaction. Number three, we treat photovoltaic principles and number four, we will examine some specific device properties. So we will start now after this block. There is a, we make a, a little time for discussions and you can put your questions in the chat and I will try to, to answer them uh, as best as I can. Uh, this is an overview. I hope we are one and a half hour or two because longer everybody gets very tired. So. I am going to speak about many things and, and I cannot explain them in detail because that would take much longer time, but I hope that it will give an opportunity to get you into having a broad idea of what is important to, to understand when you would want to understand well the operation of solar cells. So we will go to the, to the first point now. 